Why do gold and silver keep getting beaten down? Sure, we've had some ebbs and flows in the prices, but the overall trend for both metals for the past six months has been steadily downward. So what gives? After all, inflation is still rampant, food is certainly getting a lot more expensive, as anyone who goes grocery shopping is likely aware, gas prices may have come down a little bit, but sales from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve explain that. But gold and silver? Why are they dropping? Well, it all has to do with the Federal Reserve, folks. Specifically, what markets and investors believe the Fed is going to do next because that seems to be the only thing driving markets these days. Fundamentals? Forget about it. None of that matters anymore. All that matters is that the Fed is taking away the punch bowl, right? They're ending the flow of easy money, and investors seem to believe that the Fed is going to fight inflation no matter what, and win. Just look at the latest CPI numbers for September that were released last Thursday. Inflation came in hotter than expected, and you'd expect that to be a good thing for inflation hedging assets like gold and silver, right? But not so fast. Gold and silver took a nosedive on the release of that inflation data. Because hotter than expected inflation, that must mean that the Fed is going to become even more aggressive in its tightening. After all, that is what they have been telling us. Just recall what Fed Chair Jerome Powell had to say in his remarks eight weeks ago at Jackson Hole. The Federal Open Market Committee's overarching focus right now is to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal. Restoring price stability will take some time and requires using our tools forcefully to bring demand and supply into better balance. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation but a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. So, it certainly sounds like Powell is committed to tighter monetary policy to fight inflation, regardless of the consequences for the economy. And doubling down on this message, Powell made the following remarks at a news conference on September 22nd. The chances of a soft landing are likely to diminish. No one knows whether this process will lead to a recession, or if so, how significant that recession would be. Of course, we already are in the midst of what is likely to be a very deep recession indeed, brought on by this policy of Fed tightening. But forget about that for a minute. The important thing to note here for gold and silver is that in the context of these repeated hawkish statements from the Federal Reserve, when we are getting hotter than expected inflation numbers and precious metals are dropping simultaneously, this tells us that investors believe that the Fed will pursue this fight against inflation to the bitter end. And ultimately, markets believe that the Fed will be successful. And this is what they are getting wrong, for three reasons. The first reason is that while the Fed's rate hikes and quantitative tightening have been significant enough to put a real hurting on this debt bubble economy, real rates remain in negative territory, and the size of the Fed balance sheet is still gargantuan. If they really wanted to put an end to rising inflation, the Fed would need to be much more aggressive. They would need to raise interest rates at least to the current year-over-year -year inflation rate of 8.2% because positive real rates are what is needed to incentivize saving over spending. But they're not even close. The current Fed funds rate of 3% means we have negative real yields of 5%. And I'm sorry, but with negative real rates of that magnitude, inflation is not going anywhere. The second reason the Fed is going to fail this inflation fight is that the federal government continues its massively inflationary loose fiscal policy. So monetary policy, that's the Fed. They're tightening up, they're raising rates, they're shrinking their balance sheet. But fiscal policy, that's the government. And they continue to spend cash like a drunken sailor. The U.S. national debt just hit $31 trillion for the first time ever. And with an annual budget deficit over $1 trillion, it's not shrinking anytime soon. We've got student loan forgiveness. There's legislation like the oh-so-ironically-named Inflation Reduction Act, which entails hundreds of billions of dollars in spending, not to mention billions upon billions of dollars worth of military aid being funneled into Ukraine's war with Russia. And I've got a question for you. What do you think is more likely? That the government is going to slash spending and get their fiscal house in order, or that the Fed will pivot back to easy monetary policy? Leave me a comment down below to let me know which of those two events you think is more likely. And before we get into the third and final reason the Fed's fight against inflation is doomed, 
I do want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Silver Botanicals. Silver Botanicals line of household and personal hygiene products utilizes the power of nano silver. And I am happy to announce that we have extended the silver dime giveaway promotion for the remainder of 2022. So right now, if you order $50 worth of product or more, that doesn't include shipping, you can use coupon code STACKER at checkout to save 10% off your order and you will receive a free 90% Silver Roosevelt dime just like this one with your order. So check out silverbotanicals.com today, link down in the description. Okay, so the third reason and likely the most important reason that the Fed's fight against inflation is doomed is that just because they say they're willing to endure any amount of economic pain to bring inflation to their 2% target, this is almost certainly a bluff. Consider Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey's comments from a press conference back on August 4th. Returning inflation to its 2% target remains our absolute priority. No ifs, no buts. I recognize the significant impact this will have and how difficult the cost of living challenge will continue to be for many people in the United Kingdom. Inflation hits the least well-off hardest, but if we don't act now to prevent inflation becoming persistent, the consequences later will be worse and will require larger increases in interest rates. Hmm, sounds pretty familiar. A lot like Jerome Powell's hawkish comments, in fact. But that did not stop the Bank of England from pivoting and returning to a policy of quantitative easing in an emergency intervention at the end of September, when a sharp sell-off in the UK bond market threatened to collapse UK pension funds. And despite all the tough talk from Jerome Powell and the Fed, when something critical breaks in the US economy, the Fed too will be forced to pivot, just like the Bank of England. The only difference is that a Fed pivot will be orders of magnitude larger. And when that happens, watch out, because the dollar will come under tremendous pressure, precious metals will be moving much higher, and the physical stuff? Expect sky-high premiums and short supply. Now, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but all of this is why I continue to purchase precious metals at regular intervals every few months, despite the fact that the prices for both gold and silver have continued to soften. In fact, I personally am quite happy for the decline in the price of precious metals, because nothing has fundamentally changed. There's still a huge debt crisis looming, there's still a tremendous amount of fiat currency that has been created, inflation is still very high, and the fact that markets have been convinced that the Fed can fight inflation effectively? This is good news for stackers, because we can take advantage of lower prices for tangible, hard assets before the masses try to move into them and bid them up to sky-high valuations. There's a window of opportunity here, and look, timing markets is not something I try to do. How long this window will remain open, I have no idea, but I am convinced it will close eventually, probably sooner rather than later, and I want to have as many hard assets as I can before that happens. If you're looking to pick up some gold and silver, a good place to start is over at SD Bullion, my preferred bullion dealer. There's a link down in the description. But look, folks, before you start calling me a bullion dealer shill, I don't really care where you get your gold and silver from, but I do care about you, and I really appreciate everyone who watches and subscribes to this channel. And I don't want you to get caught unprepared. So will the Fed be able to fight inflation with higher rates? Are gold and silver going to keep dropping forever? Or is the Fed's mission doomed to failure? Are we going to see a pivot in soaring bullion prices? Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe and happy stacking. Smart Silver Stacker, out.